Hi everyone, Kelt here. Well, it looks like they've gone and done it, I think, now. The headlines have been mostly about Harry and Meghan. Yesterday's headlines, I took some photos in my local m and and the male headlines. Kate, we rolled out the red carpet for her. And the Sunday Times headline, William behaved like a snob when Harry fell for Meghan. And the Sun on Sunday, Will's snob to Meg. That was yesterday. And today it's talking about how they could have totally blown it. That there appears to be no chance of them being able to get back into the royal family in any sort of role after the supposed 12 months is up. So the papers are saying that Harry was so entranced by Meghan that he convinced himself that she was a woman that he would marry after only their second date. Talks about Meghan tipping off the paparazzi when she worked as an actress in Canada, despite her later going on to claim that she didn't understand the tabloid culture. And I have a complete video about that. Um, I'll put a link in the description. In fact, what I'll do is I think I'll go through this after I've uploaded it and put in timestamps for each piece of information because I think this might be a longer video because there is so much going on right now, so much coming out from this book. And then it says Meghan's friends claimed that she endured prejudice from the royal household with a senior staff member over her telling a colleague there's just something about her I don't trust. So it's pretty obvious that many people didn't trust her from the start because they went by their gut feelings. And William did as well, because it says here that Harry believed William was a snob for urging him not to rush into his relationship with Meghan, worrying that his brother was being blindsided by lust. And it says about how they've barely spoken since. And the piece about Harry being deeply offended by his brother, referring to Meghan as this girl. I don't see why he would possibly be offended by that, because... Many times Harry referred to Meghan as this girl. And if you can find any videos where he says this, please email me. But I'm pretty sure that I remember Harry saying, referring to Meghan as this girl. And people were commenting that she wasn't a girl, she was a woman. So if anyone can find that, let me know. But I'm sure he referred to her more than once as a girl and and he referred to her as this girl how can he say, how can he criticize william for saying that and then megan was disappointed that kate did not welcome her into the family and found her frosty um i think kate more than welcomed her and now kate is speaking out and she and william are now in the headlines saying that they totally disagree with that and pointing out where they did actually more than welcome her kate sent flowers to megan for her birthday and They, she cooked meals for her, vegan meals. She shouldn't have to defend herself. This is all wrong, in my opinion, that it's got to the point where Catherine and William have to defend themselves. They don't have to. And for Meghan to complain about William and Kate having the the plum jobs, they are the future king and queen consort. They're just showing themselves to be jealous and bitter. And then we have Megan. It says, A tearful Megan told friends about their decision to quit the royal du- duties. I gave up my entire life for this family. And we would ask what life? It appears she didn't really give up anything. She kept her best friends. She, she kept Marcus Anderson as her friend. Harry had to cut off everybody. Megan kept everyone that was useful to her. And she didn't give up her blog. She subtly still kept a blog going by using other people to do it. So William told Harry not to rush this and take as much time as you need to get to know Meghan. And extracts from the Finding Freedom book also claimed that some other royal family members voiced concerns about Meghan. Many people voiced concerns about Meghan. A lot of the general public voiced concerns about Meghan. And then it says that Meghan was described by some palace insiders as Harry's showgirl who came with a lot of baggage. Also says that Kate Kate and Meghan were never really friends and they had little in common. Well, that goes without saying. I think Kate tried really hard to be friends with Meghan. And this complaint that Meghan had about 
Catherine going shopping in the same area where Megan went shopping doesn't make sense. She says that she went off in her Range Rover and didn't invite Megan to go shopping with her. How did Megan know where Kate was going shopping? Um, Who revealed this information to the writers of the book? And many people do this. Even best friends do this. Sisters that get on really well do this. If they're going to go somewhere and they need to get something done quickly, they don't invite somebody who lives nearby every time. And why would Catherine want to be dragged into Megan's pap walks, her calling the paparazzi for the photos? Catherine obviously discerned that it would turn into a fiasco and a circus if she went out shopping with Megan. And I think she was very wise not to. It says here, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are professional victims who always saw the negative in everything. This was from a palace insider. This ex-staff member said that nothing was ever their fault. And this could be one of their many aides who left. I think they lost, was it 10 or 12 in, in one year? And it seems as though maybe they're speaking out now. This person goes on to say that it was a very challenging working environment. It was high pressure and extremely stressful. Nothing was ever good enough. They always saw the negative in everything. Nothing is ever their fault, always someone else's. They are professional victims. This was what a previous employee of theirs said to the Mail on Sunday. And as far as their protection goes now, as far as I know, they retained the Met Police protection until March of 2021. And I think that there are about six of them. It talks about them being a major draw, a major draw for the royal family, and that their popularity had grown. But along with that, also their difficulty in understanding why so few inside the palace were looking out for their interests. So there was this conflict going on. They felt that they were becoming indispensable for the royal family but they didn't understand why they weren't being pandered to. And their team were even trying to compare their online interest with Kate and William, and there is no comparison. Catherine and William are consistent, and we've had nothing but consistency from them since they got together. And the author said that the Sussexes had made the monarchy more relatable, and yet it says that Harry is said to have become drained with family politics. I think Harry was drained with family politics because he didn't understand, still doesn't understand how it all works. And then Harry talks about the conflict between himself and the institution of the monarchy, and he likens it to standing in front of a firing squad. This this man has no clue. So what do you think about that comment? Harry thinking that it's like standing in front of a firing squad. Unbelievable. And apparently, Harry was also angry about being barred from establishing their own team in Windsor, which would be separate from all the others, says that senior officials quickly ruled out that option. They tried to air their frustrations for months, but it didn't lead anywhere. So they just were stamping their feet and wanting their own way and couldn't see that they couldn't go rogue. They couldn't go off on their own and just do what they wanted to and keep all the perks of the job, the titles and the money and everything. And for them to say also that they were furious at taking a back seat to senior royals like Charles and William, it's almost as if, I mean, we can understand that Meghan didn't know about the workings of the monarchy, but Harry should know. And it's almost as if she's been rebelling against it all, questioning it all. And instead of Harry being firm and saying, no, look, it's this way, this is how it works. He's almost been, well, he has been sucked right into her way of thinking. So they were referred to the squeaky third wheel of the family by a palace staffer. They complain and whine that they were victims of a merciless machine. I think they've been shown a lot of mercy, especially by the Queen. The bit that really shocked me, not surprising really, is where it says that Harry and Meghan even considered driving straight to see the Queen after returning from Canada in January because they had failed to secure an appointment with the monarch. It's known that you just don't, no matter who you are, even as the Queen's grandson, you don't just go and see her, you have to make an appointment. Even if she wasn't the Queen, it would be polite to at least phone and arrange to meet someone and not just barge in on them. 
And then it talks about Harry discussing the need for change with the Queen and Charles before the summit, but was frustrated by the lack of movement. That sounds like Meghan's talk, wanting action all the time, but not really thinking ahead. So it was then left to the Queen and William and Catherine to be a tower of strength to the nation, it says, during the lockdown. The Queen's rousing address was her finest hour, which many of us believe. Also mentions the Cambridge's lifting morale with Zoom calls to charities. Despite, I would add, the fact that Meghan and Harry were criticising their Zoom calls by saying that at least they were getting out, you know, and delivering food and not safely hiding behind a camera. They are like a couple of petulant teenagers stamping their feet. It's really embarrassing now. One of their main complaints appears to be William and Catherine ignoring Meghan at the Commonwealth Service at Westminster Abbey in March which was the Sussex's final duty as senior royals, even though I don't believe they were ever senior royals. It was proved that they weren't senior royals when Prince Charles told them to stand back and said senior royals only. Again, another video, and I'll put a link. So as far as that goes, I remember that a couple of things happened which made me think at the time, and and others, that it was actually a miracle that Catherine was so civil, even though she ignored Meghan, that she was um, rising above the anger that both of them, she and William, would have felt. Because there were a couple of things that happened right before that service. I think that there was possibly the arguing with Her Majesty the Queen. I know that there was an argument with Meghan and the Queen. And I believe that it was then that Meghan had told her to drop dead. Then there was this service, I think possibly could have been the following day. I know, I believe it was around the same time. And Catherine and William agreed to keep the peace, basically keep Meghan and Harry relatively sweet by agreeing to not walk in the procession behind Her Majesty the Queen and to stay in the seating area, because Meghan and Harry would not have been in a position where they could have done that, having stepped down from their roles. So, again, treating them like children who have had something taken away from them, William and Catherine show a lot of grace by also not doing it, not joining in the procession. And I think it was that, along with the anger and distress that they must have felt at Meghan telling their eldest and most respected family member, i.e. Her Majesty the Queen, to drop dead. So I think they showed great restraint, amazing restraint. So as for the authors, Omid Scobie and Carolyn Durand, they're said to be given access to Harry and Meghan's inner circle. They seem to be starstruck. Omid definitely seems to be starstruck. We just wonder how long this will last until he's also ghosted because Meghan and Harry are saying that they weren't involved in the writing of the book. So now Omid is left saying that, oh, they form these opinions by being around them. It's only a matter of time and I think he'll be ghosted. He's supposed to be a royal reporter and has talked about Catherine and William and other family members. So he needs to be careful because this is very much for Harry and Meghan. And he's implied that Catherine is... He's not said it directly, but he's implied it. I doubt that he will ever be able to report on them again. I doubt... I think Meghan will probably ghost him and and he'll be looking for another job. And then we have royal snub. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry rejected the Queen's incredible Commonwealth offer. So they rejected the Queen's offer to take over the Commonwealth, um, according to royal biographer Hugo Vickers, who said the refusal was a tragic loss for both parties involved. I don't think so. I don't think that they rejected the offer. I think this is so that they don't lose face. I think they had their roles taken away, part of their roles. And it says here, the Queen wanted her grandson, Prince Harry, and his wife, Meghan Markle, to take over the Commonwealth from her. And she probably did, before she knew how they would behave. According to royal biographer Hugo Vickers, he told Sky News that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex rejected Her Majesty's offer as they stepped away from their royal duties. I don't believe that. It was the one thing that they talked about more than anything else, especially at the engagement interview. The Commonwealth was their thing. Meghan even having all the 
Commonwealth flowers sewn into her veil, they wouldn't let anything like that go. It goes on, the royal expert made the remarks as he commented on the recent serialisation of an upcoming biography focused on Meghan and Harry's time in the royal family and their controversial departure. He told Sky News that the Queen really handed the whole of the Commonwealth to Harry and Meghan, and they could have both jointly have made the most fantastic contribution. And I agree with that, that if they had done it right, they could have done. It wouldn't have taken much. They could have done so much good. And it goes on saying that they had already started doing so, and I think it's a great loss, actually. And he said that the role of the royal family is primarily to support the Queen, and those that support her and help her are the most successful. The royal biographer noted that when they are not needed by the Queen, they are given endeavours they can do on their own, like the Commonwealth. I personally think that the Commonwealth positions were taken away from Harry and Meghan after the disastrous Australia and Africa tours. I cannot imagine the Queen would let them continue, especially as she quickly sent Prince Andrew out to improve relations with Australia in the wake of the Sussex's destructive tour of Australia. But knowing what we know now about all the difficulties with Prince Andrew, uh, maybe he wasn't such a good choice, but at least he knows how to behave on tour, you know, representing the royal family. This writer went on to note what a pity it was that Prince Harry was not in the UK during the pandemic to help out his family. He remarks that they sparked controversy when they discussed the legacy of the Commonwealth within the context of racism and racial injustice, which was ignorance on Harry's part and quite devious on Meghan's part. He said that the royal family have buckled down during the lockdown and they've done a pretty good job inspiring the nation and helping people in different ways. And then he criticises Prince Harry hiding away in a $50 million mansion in LA while everyone else was buckled down. And again, they would have disagreed with that. They were trying to say that they were going out and doing stuff. We only saw a few photos of them handing out meals, but they were comparing that to what the royal family were doing. This reporter, Vickers, told Sky News that Harry and Meghan rejected Her Majesty's offer and that they were unable to secure time with the Queen. And that was when Harry wanted to break royal protocol and spring a surprise visit on her. It says that although the couple gave no interviews for the book, it painted an extremely flattering portrait of them. That's because their favourite royal reporter was co-writing it. They also complained that their picture was absent from the desk in the green drawing room at Buckingham Palace, where the Queen gave her annual address. And they had already felt sidelined and not a, not a part of the future of the royal family, but they took that as a, as a snub. Really, it was the Queen showing the line of succession, and anyone knowing that would not have taken offence. And the question being asked now is, why doesn't the Queen cut them off completely? I've been asking this question a lot. And maybe this is next. It's being said that this could be next on the cards and that really they, they have no choice after this book. And now we have the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge hitting back after the biography said that they actively spurned Meghan. Again, I said that there were good reasons for Catherine's coolness towards Meghan. And that is with just what we know. What about all the things we don't know? What about all the things that went on behind the scenes that we don't know, but they know? And the stuff that we do know, um, it has started to come out. I did videos some time back, about a year ago, and these things are now coming out and showing just how much Meghan got away with, with her treatment of the Queen and other people. Meghan had no complaint about Catherine. Catherine personally cooked vegan meals for her. She invited Meghan's friends and the bridesmaids and page boys to a party before the wedding, and she asked her twice to join her in the royal box at Wimbledon, um, and more. So how can they say that they weren't welcomed, that, she, that Meghan wasn't welcomed? She was the only one, the first one to be invited for Christmas before her marriage with the royal family, although some are saying that she was already married, and that's another story that she and Harry married in Africa, that it was a very rushed and a very spontaneous thing, and that that was why she was invited to the Christmas before she was married with the royal family, because 
tradition has it that only um, couples come and stay there when, they, when they're actually married. And this statement here in the book where it says that Harry felt that they were used for their popularity, I find that statement really surprising because it is said that Harry reads all the comments online about himself. So does he not know how they were recently voted the most unpopular couple in the world? And the book talks about them liaising with Buckingham Palace about, release, about releasing a statement on January the 8th, the day after they visited Canada House in London. This totally caught the Palisades off guard because it was accompanied by the launch of the Sussex Royal website, which was proposing what they wanted and it hadn't been rubber stamped by the Queen. So the Queen had been blindsided and Meghan gets offended because the Queen doesn't bow down to Meghan's demands and doesn't sign off anything and gives it a year. So the Queen showed then that she wasn't going to be manipulated by this actress who married her grandson. So their plans to keep everyone in the dark and to just quit and move away caused a lot of ill will in the household and especially in the family. But it does go on to say that they felt that they didn't have any choice in this matter. So another paper, re another paper mentions that Kate didn't reach out, visit or teach about life in the royal family and even shopped on the same street at the same time in her Range Rover without inviting Meghan. So, I mean, what a big baby. I thought that she was this strong, independent woman. Then Omid Scobie, why asked whether there had been off-the-record discussion, he said, you've read the book. There's no on-the-record interviews with the couple. And then when he was pressed again on that same question, he replied, no, and I think you can tell from the reporting, my time around the couple is enough for me to know my subjects. Yes, Omid, we can tell that you were possibly quite easily taken in starstruck and maybe gullible, but at least it makes you feel important. The wedding day was bittersweet for Meghan, it says, as her father Thomas Markle was absent from her special day. And according to the new book, Finding Freedom, Meghan distracted herself from her family problems on the eve of her wedding day by FaceTiming her friend from the bath. So which friend, we wonder, was it Jessica Mulroney or was it Marcus Anderson? because both are, or were, Meghan's closest friends on the eve of her wedding. In fact, she knew Marcus much longer, and they always looked to be closer than any other friends. It's not for us to judge, but it does seem to have always been double standards, whereby Meghan kept friends of both sexes close, and Harry got rid of all of his and replaced them with his mother-in-law, Doria. So this is just my catch-up on what is in the news, and there seems to be more coming in by the hour. This book has certainly made waves and I'll be making another video soon. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Ding my bell for more alerts, for more videos. Like if you liked it and share. Bye.